the coming of Nibiru while the Anunnaki extraterrestrials never left. The shocking interview given by Bob Dean in September 2008 in Arizona, in which he refers to all the secret projects and the unexplained mysteries of our times. Indeed, the Anunnaki exist, he says. The Ark of the Covenant has been found. Lake Vostok in Russia hides great secrets. Nibiru is coming. And uh, we have to enjoy what he says. I was a normal person for much of my life when I learned that I learned in 1963, 64, 65, what I learned my life had changed my life, and what I had learned became my obsession, and all these years I have learned much more. The old model collapsed around me, the world I thought I was living in was not the real world I lived in, and the reality was not what I really understood. I discovered that many of what we see is an illusion, and we, we humans, sometimes instead of facing reality, create a small world of our own. You know, we get up and go to work, we raise the children, we buy a house, a car, we are going on vacation, we go on with our lives, we try to save money, which we put in the bank for the children's college, and we live a normal life. And then I learned that there was no normal life, quote unquote, that the world exists and is not what we think it is, and the old model crashed under my feet. I'm sitting here in front of you like a human wreck, we could say, as to what I used to be. Because I have lived, he says, in a world cut and sewn to specific measurements. I've been a member of a network called the Old Boys Network for over 40 years. When this network was created, it consisted of soldiers of all rank services, and even had two, we even had two cosmonauts who connected with us and provided information. Well, all these days, the old boys, we exchanged information with each other because we held high positions in the army in our ranks. We had a pair of admirals, two cosmonauts, countless colonels and majors, sergeants, people from all walks of life all over the world who provided information that we shared with each other. And some of us held very sensitive positions and had access to very high quality material. Initially, there were more than 150 people but nowadays there are not more than 10. Abnormal anomaly. There is a super secret group among the secret groups called the National Reconnaissance Office. For many years, the EGA had a series of satellites called the Keyhole System. It was a top secret and probably the best satellite system in the world, and it could read a stamp from space. The officials of EGA focused on what was called anom anomaly, Anomalia Ararat, which is a puzzle when the images were downloaded to the computer and after being processed, analyzed and cleaned, everyone was left with their mouths open. They exclaimed, Christ, it's a boat. It's a big boat. So they sent a team of selected Marines who parachuted in and spent several days in this large area. The boat would, uh, in, at Mount Ararat, they believe is Noah's Ark. When they returned, they brought with them some irregular objects, quote-unquote, which have never been described or named. These irregular objects were classified as more than just top secret. Initially, it was the Ararat anomaly. Then they discovered a giant ship, which may be Noah's Ark, but no one can know for sure. For sure. It's probably a ship that can be built by man, and from the findings, we understand that it was made of wood. It really is a work of greatness. This ship, no one knows when it survived, when was the last flood. The last rumor said about 12,000 years ago, 10,500 BC. That's around the time of the uh, Clovis Comet Younger Dryas period. What could possibly found, be found in this great shipwreck that is so sensitive? Nobody knows. There are also reports of another object that is much higher, very close to the top. Then we have Lake Vostok in uh, Russia. Lake Vostok is a sensitive story in itself. Beneath the ice in Antarctica is a freshwater lake deep beneath the, the ice, which is 100 miles long, 50 miles wide, freshwater. The temperature of the lake is about 65 degrees, so it's balmy. But at the bottom of the lake, there is what is known as the mascon, a massive pool of metal, very similar to the mascon they discovered on the moon a giant circular metal object deep beneath the ice at the bottom of Lake Vostok there. This is one of the most sensitive things today. Another top secret. Public opinion should not know why it cannot handle it. 
The consequences are huge, but the Chinese know it. They have gone to another level. The last thing I heard is that they have a satellite orbiting the moon and that they have a lot of photos in their possession. And I hope China publishes photos, something NASA has not done, which took thousands of photos with Project Clementine. Project Clementine was not a pro program of NASA, but of the Army and the Ministry of Defense. They took thousands of pictures. Only about a dozen have been released. They took all the pictures around the moon, backside of the moon, top, bottom, everywhere. Our original space program was a product of Von Braun. Without Von Braun, his collaborators, and Project Paperclip, I do not think we would have reached the moon and certainly been defeated by the Russians because they too grabbed scientists from Germany at the uh, Nazi era party. Now, and the, and the Russians have a significant scientific program of their own. They do not need uh, uh, the Germans after all. They did it in their own way. One of the biggest secrets is the secret space program. Why do we keep the huge facilities on the moon secret? Facilities which are not ours. The Anunnaki, there are four groups that I have met, and they are all humanoid. In fact, one group is human, and not all of them are nine feet tall. The beautiful story is chapter 6, Genesis, is true. They made the genes and chromosomes of all the existing species on the planet in the laboratory, as Zachariah Sitchin says, 20,000 years ago. The information I have shows that 60,000 years ago, one of the most important upgrades took place when Homo sapiens was further genetically modified. The four groups are the people who are also called the Nordics, and uh, they look tall, you know, white-haired and blue-eyed. Uh, then there are the big whites, who are very tall and very pale, the greys and the Anunnaki. Greys is a technical form of life, man-made androids, an artificial form of life, laboratory products, greys. It's a kind of off-white color like flower. Giant objects in our space, watching. There are slides, photos of giant objects that are watching us, and many of them are in orbit around the Moon and Mars. The Russians, you know, a few years ago, they sent their famous Phobos rocket system to Mars, which was hit by an, quote-unquote, irregular object that emerged from the surface. But uh, they had taken a number of amazing photos before that was destroyed and crashed. The Phobos program was sent because they hoped to land a landing vehicle on the satellite Phobos, the, moon, the Mars of Moon that has the, the Phobos tower on it. Now, there are two satellites orbiting Mars, um, Phobos and Deimos. These two satellites have some anomalies. They are too small to be natural satellites, and they are very close to the surface of Mars. And if they were really natural, they should have, due to gravity, crashed onto Mars. Fear is about... Uh, Phobos is about 12 miles uh, in diameter and Deimos 6 to 7 miles in diameter. There is intelligence on Mars that wants to limit our access to their reality and that did not let the Russian satellites land, resulting in it going out of orbit and crashing. And from the knowledge I have and the limited amount of information I have, the main weight, the main intelligence behind it all is the Anunnaki, the same group that genetically created so many th uh, humans so many thousands of years ago, and the Anunnaki never left. Two factories. Obviously, there were two factories on the planet which are divided. One side wants to use us as they always did. The other side wants to give us the opportunity to grow as a species and shape our future to define our own lives, and obviously there is a difference of opinion. I never think we'll go to nuclear war because the Custodians won't allow it, Earth is precious, it's very rich reservoir of life. It's not only humans who are here on this planet, but also all other creatures. The planet is an absolute abundance of beauty, beautiful life forms, and not only that, but also its fauna and flora. They have invested too much on the planet to let them get lost. Prime detective. The most important guiding principle is to prohibit any interference with the internal development of extraterrestrial civilizations, but which have been broken for centuries and even thousands of times. They have intervened according to our historical records back in ancient Greece, but also contributed to the War of Troy, ancient Troy. There were rumors even in Homer's reports that the gods themselves came down, shared on both sides, and played in the game. 
For them, it's a game and nothing else. Planet X, according to Zachariah Sitchin and the Sumerians, it is a reality. Well, our astronomers have obviously come to the conclusion that it is indeed a reality. For almost a century, astronomers have been interested in what they call invaders, quote unquote, and who seem to come and go from time to time, and they can understand them from the disturbances and effects on other planets. The existence of this has been known for a long time, but nothing has ever been said publicly about Planet X. Well, in the early 80s, JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, sent a pair of pioneering satellites to find out if there was any truth to that. The astronomers became concerned and sent an infrared astronomical satellite IRIS, A I R A S. It was done in 1983, and IRIS's mission was to receive infrared radiation throughout the ecliptic up and down. And obviously, IRIS brought two giant positive answers that yes, the 12th planet, or the 10th planet, as you can call it, is real, and is now, uh, it re is, and is now ranked for the good of the alarm bells. According to the Sumerians and Zachariah Sitchins and his group, the last passage was 1,600 BC, and its orbit lasts about 3,600 years. So if you count it, you'll see that its next passage is due any time now. Every time Nibiru makes a pass, it's not always destructive. It will depend on whether the planet Earth and Nibiru are on the same side of the sun at the same time. And if we were on the same side of the sun at the same time, all hell would break loose on planet Earth. Well, obviously, the last passage caused the explosion of the volcano of Santorini, the volcano of Thera in the Mediterranean, and the Aegean dried up fire and brought up to an end the great Minoan civilization, among others. It also affected Egypt. They exist in all archives. There are even historians and theologians who say that the eruption of the Santorini volcano caused the plagues of Egypt and allowed Moses to escape with the Israelites. Nibiru, according to ex existing photos, is a beautiful planet, two and a half times the size of the Earth. It's headed towards the center of the universe, and we know a lot about it except its name. Zachariah Sitchin said that we can simply call it Nibiru. Many argue that Nibiru, once it comes from the outer limits of the solar system, is going to be an icy rock, which is not going to be the kind of place that any creature could or would like to live on. The researcher Andy Lloyd believes that what we see in photos showing an orange object is actually a brown dwarf and Nibiru is one of its moons. But it's not an icy rock. Really, from the moment it makes such a long journey, journey and the sun seems like a small bit of light, one would say that it is natural to be icy. Obviously, the planet, like other planets in the universe, has its own heat and has at its core a heat generating system that's very similar to our planet. We have the system inside the core of our planet, the usefulness of which has been described as a thermonuclear reaction, very similar to the sun. And now most of life and all generosity and all the beauty of life on this planet comes from our movement around our warm sun. I do not think Nibiru is an icy rock. I think it generates enough heat through advanced technology, a kind of a Dyson fear. The brilliant astronomer Freeman Dyson said a few years ago that with an incredibly advanced technology, they have the ability to surround the planet and maintain not only its heat, but also its atmosphere. And I suspect the Anunnaki have done this for Nibiru, and they probably did it thousands or maybe a million years ago. I think the color of the planet, its dull red gold color, is a result of the golden shell they have created through the Dyson sphere. The question is, since they have so much engineering knowledge, they did not stay on Mars and continued their journey through the solar system. The Anunnaki were not the original inhabitants of Mars. They used Mars as a station, and now they have reactivated it. They used to collide with Mars as they pass through this point in space. There are still a few remnants of the original inhabitants of Mars. There are still some clues that I have been looking for, and I have got some evidence that we are hosting several Martians on our planet. We're talking about the original species. Zachariah Sitchin estimates that Nibiru will, take, will approach us around 2060. I'm not so sure about that conclusion. The Ministry of Defense is very worried, and the whole Department of Ministry are working on it. The big question is, whether we will be on the same side of the sun at the same time as Nibiru passes. 
This is uh, from the coming of Nibiru, and I've translated this from a Greek article. Please leave your comments, and thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.